Hello. Let me begin in with a short event for, for the today's session. Have you got a call form and tool room and saying that hey how long you would need to run the analysis for the complete mode? And probably you'll start in giving the explanations hey I need to extract the curves for the cooling lines for the fit systems and then probably duplicate the cavities across yes probably I would have given the same answers almost like in four years back when we would not have the ability to import the complete mode I got the call from an user and saying that is it possible to analyze the complete mold assembly within the mold without extracting any curve or doing the different types of meshing. So with that I like to welcome you for the today's tips and workflow where we are going to demonstrate the meshing of the complete mold. When I say complete mold comprise of the feed system, the multiple cavities and the cooling channels. As you can see the part which I use for the, or using for the demonstration is having a quite a complex cooling channels and probably it would take a, quite a significant time if you need to go and extract the curves out of it. So what's the work around on this? Let's get begin. So I started importing this assembly in the Fusion 360 which I usually do it and I love doing it. The reason is that with Fusion 360 I can quickly you know do the defeaturing or removing of those fine details which are not necessary for carrying out the analysis like in this case if I need to remove something like the the detailing given for the mode identification or the cavity identifications or the calendars can be easily be removed. It also helps you to do the boolean operations like in this case that it was a mistake done by the mold designer he has forgot to give the outlet like if you can see the cooling channels the running from this direction and going out probably you don't have the inlet and outlet for it so I thought of using the Fusion 360 for uh, doing this boolean operation other thing is that when you are trying to do the meshing for the fit system and the part together probably you need to create a single surface between these two what do you mean by single surface is that only one surface should be between this if there's a two surfaces then it possibly to give the chances of not having the connectivity I'm, I'm going into the little bit details of it the reason is that Fusion 360 can help you to do these simple modifications and after doing the modifications this is how the part would look like you can see this I created the inlets and outlets for it I also did the boolean operations where I cut out the portion of it like in this case if I need to show it to you and isolate it Sorry. you can see that I have created the impression of this uh, into the cavity for like I have created the impression for this for the all the cavities as you can see that now my assembly is almost ready probably you want to create even a mold block around it that's absolutely fine and you can do the boolean operations here as well but doing the mold block in mold flow is much easier compared to doing it in any of the cat let me show it to you with that I'm going to push this entire assembly that comprise of the feed system the cooling channels from the core side cats cavity side and the four cavities let's get started and as you can see that uh, the whichever the version that is the latest version that is available for you gets you know popped up 
Now here you have two options whether you go with the existing project or you can create a new project. Well, I'm going to create an actually uh, in the existing project which uh, for the demonstration purpose I created an work around or workflow already ready for you. If the assembly is uh, big, it may, may take a little bit of more time compared to the, the usual time it takes for the importing. But that was pretty fast. And as you can see that I have the complete mold assembly getting inputted into the into the mold flow. The first thing and foremost, I will start begin with that giving the attributes to the different components or different geometries. Let's begin with the, the first one. Like the part, you do not need to give the attribute. By default, all of the components or the geometries it will be assigned as the mesh geometry or the part, whichever the you going to select. Like in this case, I selected the all everything as 3D. So everything that would be a part 3D. Let's begin with assigning the ch change the property type to to the to the cold runner 3D, and then for the cooling channels, I selected all of the cooling channels. Select it again, and side two those all of the five cooling channels I selected. Change the type to the channel 3D and everything is converted into it and now you are almost ready to run the uh, you know run the mesh on it but i would prefer that you first do the surface mesh for the for the feed system and the part and wherever you get an interface mesh over there first for that purpose you need, need not to go directly 3d first create a dual domain or the surface mesh delete the surf interface mesh over here and then connect the your gate and the geometry if you don't do that probably you may have chances of like disconnecting this and once the 3d mesh has been created it becomes very difficult to again you know re-edit or try to connect them if you try to connect those 3d meshes you often Come across the errors like the inverted tetras and becomes very difficult to correct that geometry and then you can assign the for the channel 3d cool fem you select that assign the inlets and outlets to these channels as per the mold design and you can begin with the first with the creating the creating the mesh for the channels okay or you can you can uh, before creating the mesh for the channels you can also create the mold component here the interesting thing is that in the mold block wizard uh, there is an option that you can create the surface or you can create the 3d CAD I would recommend creating a 3d CAD because that has a very less chances of getting the mesh failure if you go for the surface mesh that usually we do it for any of the dual domain or mid plane uh, it may have a possibility of chances that the tolerance are not matched between the mold boundaries and the cooling channel the another important thing here to mention is that you should keep your inserts visible I mean to say don't hide any of the CAD geometry while creating the mold block because that is something it would be doing a boolean operations and if your CAD geometries are are hidden uh, then it may miss from that boolean operation okay so to save the time I already created the complete mesh for it uh, let me take you through that and as you can I was referring that you should create these as the CAD mold block rather than creating the default surface and as you can see that now 
I have the complete mold ready or the complete mold mesh with the all four cavities and those complex cooling channels from the core side as well as from the cavity sides. I created a, actually a, a portion of the block uh, cut and we'll see through it how the mesh would look like from the inside from the inside the mold pardon me for that it's just taking a bit of time I'm showing you everything live over here on, on my PC here you go we have the complete mold block and as you can see that I have meshed the all of the cooling channels and more block and the part as a 3 and I took the section of it and trying to show you that how does the you know complete mold would look like assign the gate location at the start at the beginning and you are ready to run the analysis so if you get any queries any questions from the tool room team that hey can you import a complete mold block as it is rather than going for creation of the cooling curves or beam elements the answer is yes pretty much so each of these workflows has the advantages and disadvantages this is the very easy workflow you import the CAD geometry it's straightforward you assign the attributes mesh it and you're running the analysis versus the in the beam you need to extract the curves create the beam elements and then you run the analysis since this is in 3d if anything needs to be changed to it probably you have to come back to your CAD model or fusion 360 re-edit it and submit it back to the mold flow whereas in case of the beam element the possibility that you just click on the beam element and change the attributes or change the dimensions of it uh, if you want to add the baffles or bubblers at some point of time you can do it very easily but it needs a, a bit of the preparation time here there is absolutely you know zero preparation time you just begin with the meshing and running the analysis so with that I think uh, the workflow was um, good enough to give an understanding of how we can import the complete mold assembly with that thank you for your time and signing off for the today's session talk to you again soon